lines that intersect in infinity and meet in God. And I like this notion of the parallel lines, of them reflecting upon each other. Uh, you know, there are some people who believe that religion is just failed art. And there are also people who believe that art is, uh, is, is failed religion. But I, I think there's some value in keeping them separate and letting them, letting them each have a kind of independent uh, path. So if spiritual art is the art which addresses spiritual need, hunger, uh, religious art then would be the art that addresses institutional need need of uh, the church. Uh, institutional needs, education, uh, edification, proselytization, all of the traditional things that an organization uses art you know, to, to promote. They are different forms of art. Now, all arts, why do you uh, all arts are not equal. Some are better uh, at separate tasks than others. And if spirituality is a Tao, if it is a way, if it is a process, then certain arts are useful. And I believe that spirituality is that. It is an, an ongoing process of an individual and his relationship to the divine, to the transcendent. And it's not a one-time thing. It goes on. And so art forms that simulate this process are in some way more useful to a spiritual artist. The primary one would be ritual. Uh, which is just beautiful for uh, spiritual art. The, the chanting, the incense, the repetition, the, uh, the, the gestures, all of it are, are just great for creating uh, a kind of spiritual awareness. Architecture is actually quite good at spiritual awareness because it channels you through time. So a cathedral is you know really very good spiritual art even even a, a country chapel um, zen gardens great spiritual art uh, other kinds of gardens uh, architecture is quite good at that music is good at it music is, because again it takes you through time painting sculpture not so good uh, one is because they, don't, they are frozen in time. You know, in the famous essay by Gatholm uh, Lessing about the lacoon, you know, he talked about the pregnant moment where uh, the lacoon is frozen. Well, uh, if something is frozen, then it's, it's not so easy to, to use it as a path. You know, the only path is the path of the person watching the frozen object. Uh, you know, and also on top of it, it has physical representation, which is always a problem in spiritual art because it brings you down. The moment you have physical representation, you're, you're caught by the potential of emotional identification, and then that lowers the stakes and starts to make, you know, uh, the, divine, the quest for the divine a, a kind of quest for uh, divine feelings or for a kind of humanness. Uh, you know, maybe that's why uh, religion has always had so much trouble with painting, uh, you know, from the Cromwell's Puritans or the Islamists. They don't like the graven images because it, 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 it can really be counterproductive in a spiritual way. Not as religious art, but as spiritual art. In fact, I think the, the greatest of the spiritual painters, uh, Mark Rothko, his most spiritual work is in fact in the Rothko Chapel in Houston, 
where there are, what is it, seven canvases or 11, I forget. But it is where he combines architecture with his canvases. And he combines the whole concept of space and time with, with his canvases. If I had a chalkboard here, you know, I would write, I underlined it, emotional identification is the enemy of spiritual awareness. Because it takes the notion of God and reduces it to human emotion. And so uh, I want to believe in God because I feel sad or because I admire the priest. All of this demeans the spiritual quest. And uh, physical realism in art, of course, uh, is, one, is the primary me mechanism for emotional identification, for empathy. So physical realism is always a risk. Now, of all of the arts, motion pictures are probably the least well-equipped to convey spirituality. In fact, they're really, really bad at it. Uh, you know, using movies to create spiritual feeling, uh, spiritual awareness, is sort of like using a, you know, a saw to try to, to hammer a nail. You know, you've got the wrong tool. Uh, and, uh, and it is always kind of sort of sad to see people, you know, using the wrong tool to try to do something. Uh, why are movies so bad at uh, spiritual awareness? Well, two things, primarily. Uh, movies are predicated on psychological realism. They are realistic images taken from life often of people just like ourselves who are living in real identifiable time. This makes movies a great mechanism for emotional identification, psychological realism, empathy, uh, and everything about the movies fosters this. The way actors appeal to your emotions, the way the music appeals to your emotion, the way plot devices, the way editing, pacing, everything is geared to work your emotions that way. That's what movies really do best. The second thing that uh, is, is really special about the movies as opposed to the other arts, because the movies are the, are the only realistic art that moves, you know, they're, they're, they're moving photographs, is the fact that they move. Uh, and movies love to move. Film loves to move. It's addicted to movement. Uh, and we go to films because they do move. Uh, yet spirituality is not that comfortable with constant activity. Spirituality likes to slow down. It likes to sort of edge its way towards stasis to try to sort of get some peace and perspective. And you have a medium that is, addic that is driven by hyperkinesis. You know, it's a driven by activity. So that uh, just like emotional uh, identification is the enemy of spirituality in art, so is um, hyperkinesis the, the enemy of spirituality and art. Uh, now, movies do, in fact, exist over time. And that's helpful. And, it, and, and in the end, it, can, it proves useful. But for the most part, the psychological realism and the, the addiction to, to kinetic movement outweigh uh, the, uh, the possibilities of, of working over a two-hour period. In the past, uh, if you wanted to demonstrate the falseness of motion pictures when it came to spirituality, it was always easy to bring up the example of the biblical epics. You know, the sex and sand uh, films from Hollywood of the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. 
because these films were so clearly cynical, hypocritical, designed by committee to make money. So it didn't take much, of a, much insight to say these are bogus, these are false, you know, Samson and Delilah and Ten Commandments and whatnot. Uh, but now we have a new standard, which is uh, Mel Gibson's film, The Passion, which is not hypocritical, which is not cynical, which is not made by committee, it's made by one man, a believer. And it's not made for money, even though it turned out to make a lot of money, it wasn't made for money. So, in fact, it's the real deal. But does that mean it's spiritual? Does that mean it's any, really any different than those other biblical uh, epics they used to make? Let's take, for example, a, you know, a scene from The Passion, virtually every scene, Christ being beaten. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, and the agonized image of uh, Jesus, blood, the sounds, the whipping, the face of Mary, Jesus' brother, the face of the centurion. This is, you know, it's emotional stuff. Is it much different than, say, let's move to another genre, AIDS movie, mother, son dying of AIDS, emaciated boy with lesions on his face, sitting there and mother at his bedside. He's dying. The mother is crying. It's the same machinery, the same machinery of pathos, the same manipulation. Uh, and the same emotions come forth. You well up, you know, with a kind of sadness and then a kind of, 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 of warmth that you can generally describe as, as a positive and, 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 and religious in a way. But it is just the mechanism of manipulation. It's what we do in the movies. We can make you feel or believe almost anything. We can make you have racist feelings. We can make you feel enormously tolerant. We can make you angry enough to kill. We can make you so in love you cry. Uh, we can make you feel nationalistic or not. Movies are very, very pliable. Uh, they work just as well for you know, the Nazis as they do for Billy Graham. They use the same techniques. And so I don't know how you can call the use of these techniques spiritual. Particularly, you know, and, and, and just like the mother whose son has died of AIDS, when she sees that scene, she's going to go to pieces because of all the baggage she's brought into the theater. Well, same way, anybody who's spent 10 years in Sunday school, 10 years in catechism, you know, several decades going to church, is going to go to pieces when they see Jim uh, Carazavell being whipped. Now that you brought that into the theater, the theater did not bring that to you. You brought it in, and, and the theater found the, you know, the movie found the button and just pressed it. Uh, so that's not, to my mind, terribly spiritual, that is the religious function of our religiosity, that is like a teaching function. The very first paintings in cathedrals, churches, were not there to inspire you, stained glass windows or the stations of the cross, they were there to teach you. It was a pre-literate time, and it was a, a teaching mechanism. Uh, and they weren't there because they were art, they were there because they were instruction. And in some ways, the passion is equally instruction. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a way to convey a message to make you feel a certain way. So, and uh, oh, here's a, oh, I wrote this in the margin. This is an interesting sidelight. Now, because of the success of the passion, 
there's a whole new sort of subgroup called uh, cine evangelism, which is these websites that try to interpret conventional movies with religious themes. Um, go to uh, a website, there's one, um, um, one called Movie Ministry, another one called Hollywood Jesus, another one called MovieGuide.org. And they will give you the religious message of a movie. So I, I wrote here, again, I looked up Collateral, you know, the, the movie with, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, with uh, uh, Cruise, Tom Cruise. And the, 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 the message of Collateral is discipline conquers doubt. So it turned out it was a, a religious <laughs> film after all. Uh, and, uh, but don't mistake you know, all of this kind of hustling for uh, anything other than, uh, than, than the emotional manipulation it is. Therefore, now we come to the other question. What can movies do to evoke uh, a spiritual process? The answer is not much and not very often. But they can do some things. And there is, in fact, a cinema of contemplation, a quiet cinema. Uh, it includes not only the directors that I wrote about years ago, Robert Bresson, Carl Dreyer, Yashishiro Ozu, but more contemporary, uh, or Rosalini, more contemporary directors, uh, Alexander Sokolov, Theo Angelopoulos, Bella Tarr, the a Japanese director, Oyama. And I forget uh, Eugene, the, the Korean director we were talking about earlier. You don't know his name either, yeah. Uh, but there are directors out there trying to do this in, with various degrees of success, of course. So how do you do this? How do you use this medium to, this medium addicted to emotional manipulation, how do you use it to create spiritual awareness? Well, you turn it on its head. You use it against itself. You take a medium and you, you simply twist. Everything is supposed to do the opposite way. So if acting is driven by the notion of empathy, then you strip acting of its empathetic qualities. You have stone performances, quiet, you know, you return to the, iconogra the iconography, uh, you step away from the, re the Renaissance, and you go back to imagery as icons, and you have characters that give you nothing. In the case of uh, Bresson, he um, would only work with non-actors. Uh, someone like Ozu would make actors do things over and over again until they finally gave up their attempt to reach across. Uh, you, narrative, narrative is a manipulative device. So you, you try to strip out the narrative. You make things, you fool around with a pace so that uh, when, when the viewer thinks the image should move or the image you should cut, you should splice time to move, new location, you don't. You keep pushing the viewer away. Keep denying the viewer what they expect from the movies. Music in particular, don't give them that cheap enforcement that music does. That's what music does in movies. It runs behind the scene with a mirror saying, happy, 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 sad, sad, scared, scared. <laughs> and, um, and when the music doesn't do that, you get confused. You know, what, what, are we supposed to be scared now? It, it looks a scary scene, but there's no scary music. Um, and so you, you know, strip, strip that away. Um, often you will, double